Welcome back here to a marginally windy Vasiliki today. Gusting force three to four every now and then, and then dropping just like it did there to a gentle two. And if this next statement relates to you, then this is the video for you. Progressing at your windsurfing, getting the hang a little bit of tax and jibing, maybe even speeding up a bit, possibly even looking towards the foot straps when there's enough wind, but the harness is a constant battle. Arms are constantly hurting. You haven't really learned to just trust the harness and let the power be driven through my body and through my feet rather than through my arms. This is how you can take the power in the sail a little bit more. Take the power through our body. Make it all a little bit less stress. Here we go. Now I think one of the points we should recognize to start with is that just because you're learning how to use the harness doesn't mean you have to be in the harness all the time. As soon as you hook in, you lose a lot of your counterbalance, stability and steering control until, of course, you're good at it. So until you've got the board settled, until you're sailing comfortably in a straight line and maybe once that gust that's hitting you has settled, then it's time to hook in. I think that's quite a key one to start with, the tactical choice of when you may hook in or hook out. There's a bit of a gust hitting me. I don't want to be hooked in straight away. Now that gust has settled, I'll hook in, and now I can start to drive a bit of power. I can see a bigger gust coming through. Oh, I'm not sure about this. Unhook for a moment or two. Actually, it feels okay. Hook back in once again. You may not be able to quite see exactly where the wind direction is on a camera like this, but it's another tactical choice of where the wind is coming from and the direction I'm traveling at before I try and hook in. It's much easier to hook yourself in and out when you're sailing slightly upwind. When I'm slightly upwind like I am now, the rig can be fairly close to me and I still have some power and control not too much of a problem to hook myself in and out. As soon as I bear away a little bit, right now, <laughs> I'm actually a bit nervous about hooking in right now. Right now I'm on a beam reach, even slightly down off a beam towards a broad reach and <laughs> I don't want to do it. Hooking in is going to pull me over. It's going to pull me over the front and, and unbalance me. Up wind, just above a beam, just above across the wind much more comfortable to hook in and out. Another little thing just to recognize when you're learning to use the harness is there's dozens of different ways you may have read or seen about how to set your harness lines before you go out. Counting five hands back from the mast towards the harness line, for example, for a five meter sail, or two fingers underneath the harness line to balance the sail. They all sort of work, but until you're out on the water starting to feel the rig, you can't actually tell exactly where they are. Perhaps you've got a heavier or a lighter boom at different places and that would unbalance the harness line position so they need to move slightly. Perhaps there's a bit of wind in the sail and that would cause the two fingers balancing the, the boom to put them in the wrong place. Perhaps you've got bigger or smaller hands. That would clearly put the uh, five hands for a five metre sail further back or further forward depending on your hand size. So the summary from that is when you get out there, try and set your hands equidistance from the front and the back harness line. Right now my two thumbs are just about touching both harness lines and I can feel it's pretty much balanced. If I were to start putting my back hand back here, then it's an indicator I need to move the harness lines back a bit more. Or the other way, if I started moving my hands forward like this, bit of an indicator 
I'll need them further forwards a little bit. On a similar line of harness line positioning and setup, what you should find is that when you're non-planing learning to use the harness, they're in one position. As you start to get planing and speed up, chances are you're going to have to move them back just a little bit further to stop you having just to use your arms to pull the sail in. The term sheet in it shouldn't involve just pulling your back hand. We should be able to commit to the harness lines and push the boom using our front hand to actually sheet that sail in. There's a little bit of technique in there in terms of which hand I'm using to do the work. But really what I was talking about there was setting the equipment up and choosing the right direction in relation to the wind or even unhooking if you're not that powered up. Now when it actually comes to hooking in and out, there's a few little tricks you can do. One of them, of course, is sailing slightly upwind. That puts you in a closer position to the harness lines, but your back thumb can then go underneath the back harness line, and you have a lot of movement, a lot of control from that harness line. So if you're close to hooking in, but not quite, a little flick with your back thumb can help encourage that line to flick in towards your harness hook. The reverse, of course, your back thumb could then push to unhook if necessary. Back thumb under, hook in, back thumb on top, unhook. Now as I start to move towards the technique of actually hooking in and hooking out and remaining in control, there's one key one that we have to mention. And those of you that have been following the channel for a while, you're probably surprised I haven't mentioned it already. It's super key for encouraging your balance, your wind awareness, and your general control in everything you do windsurfing. Say it with me, vision. Look where you want to go to maintain that sailing line. Right now, I'm looking over my leading shoulder towards the wind, spotting any gusts and lulls, spotting any waves, or of course, any other water users. If I can't look up and towards the wind, I don't know what's going on in, in relation of me towards the wind or away from the wind. I can't spot those gusts or lulls and I'm really gonna have a problem. But for hooking into the harness, you have to break that vision just for a second. And I think it's really key, it is just a second before you get caught out. You're allowed a sneaky little peek down there, but any more than a sneaky peek and you're straight out the front door. Looking up towards the wind, I can see the gust. Into the technique now, slightly, of front hand starts to push away from me. They're working together, the front and back hand. Back hands are easing in ever so slightly, but think of it like a pivot, your harness lines. If I push my front hand away, that will naturally start to pull the sail in from the back, to sheet that sail in. Here comes a little bit of a gust. We're going to see this happen just now. Front hand will be extended, back hand will pull slightly. There it is, starting to commit to that sail. And as a result, the board starts to get planing, starts to speed up that little bit more. Common faults that go wrong here, pulling way that front arm in. Bending your front arm, you may have seen if you've seen the video about how to stop catapulting, Bending your front arm is a very quick way of depowering. If that's the goal, great, just for a second, pull your front arm, open the sail out, stop yourself catapulting and possibly even sail up wind slightly. But I have a feeling that you're watching this video because depowering isn't a problem. I want to keep the power on. I want to use my arms less. So stop pulling that front arm towards you and allow the sail to ease in through the harness line. To actually get the power to kick in and drive the power down into the board and accelerate us, we have to pull the sail back towards the wind, slightly down, as in getting my hips and my butt down towards the wind, and at the same time pulling the sail in. Problems I see is, like I am now, I can't pull the sail in, back and down. The little trick is when you have the wind, a bit of space, depower just for a second, to allow yourself to pull the sail in, back and down. 
deep power using that front arm bend just a little bit and then push once again to then accelerate the board. Now I'm in back and down, the board has started to accelerate. The aim of me trusting that harness, actually committing to the harness, not pulling the rig towards me or trying to eat the boom, but actually shoulders back, hips forwards, I can start to enjoy the ride that little bit more. Deep power, power. Deep power, power. Now just then I was doing that clearly in some slightly stronger winds. But the wind had kicked in. My five metre spy from 0.7 just here had sped me up nicely. And the 141 starboard go that I'm riding just made that platform nice and stable. But without committing to that harness line and actually leaning back a little bit, getting my butt back and down into the water, but pushing that front arm, it would not have worked. Another little common mistake I see when you're learning to hook in and getting more comfortable is it becomes a massive whoop, swinging action trying to get in. Whereas if you watch the guys that are really riding well and Hopefully some of the demos I've been doing, it's a fairly swift flick of the sail. Now sure that comes with a bit of practice and a bit of muscle memory of where that sail actually is. But I think that starts with you actually practicing and realizing that looking at the harness lines and going, oh yes, I'm in, I've got it, it's there. It's not gonna, not gonna give you much success. Twist those harness lines just that little bit so they're sticking out towards you. There they are. Now, I'm much more likely to get in with that little flick than if they were sticking down and I had to do a big scoop. Harness lines twisted out slightly towards me. Upwind, bit of vision. Back thumb if I need it. Little hook in, little hook out. Little movements, dynamic, fairly powerful, swift, let's say, movements, rather than a huge whoop, where you're more likely to get caught out. A couple of key points, just to remind you then. Tactics first, do I need to be hooked in, or should I just stay unhooked for a moment or two longer? When you hook in, pick the right goal point. Pick, make sure you're sailing upwind slightly, before you then have a cheeky little glance, a little break of that counterbalance, and a little break of that vision to look at the harness lines to hook in. Once you're hooked in, actually be hooked in. Let the sail lean away from you. Push the sail even. Remember your arms can do opposite things. One hand pulls, the other one pushes. That'll depower me if it's the front arm. Or if the front arm pushes, the back arm pulls, and that powers me up slightly. You need to get the sail in, back, and down if you want to power up. But to do that, you may even have to depower just for a second or two. Thanks as always for joining me here on the Ride Along channel. I'll see you back here very soon. Thank you.